What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bronx Pinstripe Show. Scott, so there was a quote after, I think it was Friday night's game. I think Tyone said it. He's like, it's kind of a somber mood in the clubhouse, obviously referring to the King injury, even though the Yankees won. I kind of feel like that's the, the vibe around the team right now. They did win that Baltimore series. They got swept in that doubleheader in Houston. King's injury is, I think, a huge loss for this team. It's kind of a somber mood right now. It's a somber mood because of the King injury. That's, I mean, that's, that's the reason because when you, I understand that uh, we got swept by Houston, that's that series, quote unquote, that double header that day after the, it's, it was just such a bullshit little squat that they put on the, on the so calendar. Then how do you not split? You should split. They should have split. They should have split. There's it's no made to it. be split. But the, but the thing is, uh, you know, his quote, 1000% is Michael King. Like you move past that Houston. It, it was, it was frustrating, um, that they couldn't take advantage of some opportunities that they had, but, um, they did take care of business with Baltimore, who is not the Baltimore Orioles of old. These, these, uh, these kids are out here playing hard and talented, by the way, they're not just a, a bunch of young scrubs either. They're, they've got, they've got some skill that the, the catcher, the Rutschman kid is, is good. And he's going to be a pain in the ass for a long time. Um, he's he's only going to get better as he's getting comfortable. And he actually got his his uh, his legs under him pretty quickly so far, and is starting to hit. So the team's good. They have some good pitching. The bullpen is pretty pretty decent. I was impressed. Um, so I can't yeah. make my bold prediction anymore, and that's sad. That's sad to me. That's why I'm Maybe. somber. I'm somber <laughs> because I can't make my bold prediction of of uh, sixteen and one against the Orioles anymore. Maybe you just move it to the Red Sox because they're just a dumpster fire. <laughs> That's possible. That's possible. Just move it over. Just move it a little north. So let's start with the King injury. We'll, we'll, we'll work our way backwards, I guess, to, to the Houston debacle. Obviously, you feel terrible for King because he's having such a good season. And this is his breakout year. And he had a legitimate case to, to be an all-star. And then first, you know, second outing of the second half. And he quote the elbow popped i scott now i just see you're drinking red wine and it's just it's just threw me for a loop anyway um that's what the the trainer said when Boone came out i think he said elbow popped i don't yeah. know how you fra fracture an elbow throwing a pitch but you throw it really hard th that's that's not good <laughs> that's not good and extra is terrible because he was such a huge piece to this team and to this bullpen and it's going to be a lot to replace what he's given them. Yeah, no, it's uh the pop is bad. Whenever you hear a pop, whenever anybody, anybody says anything about a pop, you just you know that's not good. And then when you start thinking about that in the context of a pitcher and, and throwing a baseball as hard as they do, and he's got a lot of torque in that arm, the ball doesn't move by accident. The uh, you know the way it does, he he does that with his body and his hands, and it's uh it's it's a violent move. So that's unfortunate. It really is. It's it's a it's a it's a really shitty injury for a guy that was was absolutely um, had had found his spot. I, it was really coming into his own, um, and and frankly was just a weapon for this team. And it was going to be a big piece of the bullpen going down the stretch and, and into this playoff run. So, you know, they got to replace that. And I don't know how they replace that right now. They don't do it internally. They 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 need to go out and and make you know I think multiple moves now in the in the bullpen. So I think that they that Cashman really does have to be. We 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 said before that he's got to be aggressive. My God, just empty the tank, man. Empty the tank because that's what it's going to take right now. And and if you can if you can empty the tank with some controllable assets for the next two years or so, I say do it. I say do it because they they need it right now. And even though we have some of these injuries, they can still they can still retool and be you know just as uh, just as dangerous if they if if they re retool correctly. Again, I go back to a month ago or whenever we recorded our trade deadline episode and w GM episode, we were, we were just like, you, you know, this is a World Series caliber team. You've got to fill in a couple gaps. You've got to add some depth in, in key areas and, and get better where you can. Now, now it's you're you're <laughs> you're you're like the uh, the you're replacing the, guys is what you're doing. You're replacing guys. You're trying to you're trying to fill cracks in, in a sinking in a sinking canoe We're trying to think of the what's the the flex seal guy you slap you slap, some, yeah. slap some underwater flex seal on those holes yeah because Hot temperatures it, but but between injuries and underperformances and and the starting rotation not being nearly as as strong as it was in the first in the first two two and a half months 
there's real concerns. And if you don't make major moves, it's not just, oh, well, it, now it, if you don't make those major moves, there's serious questions about can this team actually sustain and, and win? Because there's a lot of holes. I mean, let's, let's all take a step back and relax a little bit. I don't think there's a lot of holes. I, I do think in that, the pitching staff. I think the pitching staff has a lot of holes. I think the pitching staff has. We all. We're, we're all. I think I'm, I'm holding my breath for Severino right now. If that is something that's relatively minor and he can come back and 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 be at strength and that's kind of like dodged a bullet, that that's a that's a big deal. If they don't have Severino uh, and they have to acquire, then yeah, there there are certainly a lot of holes in that in the pitching staff. I think, but in the bullpen. They do have guys that are coming back. They have um, Marnaccio just came back from his death. Marnaccio which just is, came which back. Herman's obviously back. Right now he's in the rotation. Was not good, but is in the rotation. Could eventually, if depending on what happens and what Cashman does, has the ability to go into the bullpen if needed. So they, they have uh, Clark Schmidt pitched today, pitched pitch as well. So I think they do have enough uh, bullets. I still think you need to add somebody, but – I think it's clear as day now that you have to go after a starting pitcher, Severino or no Severino, because to me the uh, Domingo Herman is much more valuable as a as an option for either. He's a swing guy. If if they have him going well as a swing guy, to me that's a more of a value. You're not going to get seven innings out of Domingo Herman on a consistent basis. He's just not that guy. So I hope that uh, that they recognize that and they and they they I think they are going to have to be aggressive in the in the free agent or I'm sorry in the uh, trade market for a starting pitcher and. I'm I'm looking at one that's controlled because that's Cashman's that's Cashman's mo. He's looking at controllable assets a year or two years, and and he will give up anybody. I think if you can get if he can get two years of control for somebody, he will give up a lot of pieces for that. Yeah, we were on Hug Watch this afternoon when the tweets were going around that Sweeney and Dominguez were both pulled from from their games, their minor league game, and, and everyone's like, oh, when that happens, there's usually a trade that's announced a couple hours later. Nothing's been announced yet. It's it's almost eight o'clock on Sunday night. No, nothing's been announced, but that's what we're looking for, right? Is it's very high end prospects getting moved for for pieces that can help you right now. Yeah, and I think that you know it doesn't necessarily have to be those. I mean, they can add some stability. I don't think they have to go after the dominant dominant guys. Like if they don't get Luis Castillo, if they have other available options and that do not take. Um, you know, the likes of, of Volpe and Dominguez, then they're still in that market too. I don't, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't deem it as, as a failure if they don't, you know, go after and, and obtain a Castillo or, or, or a, it has to be like a top flight guide. I, I think that they can, you know, find some other, uh, some other op options that will, that would be good that probably don't take a, a Jason Dominguez or a, a Volpe because they're going to need, they're going to need them for, um, I just don't think I don't know if Luis Castillo is worth them to be honest in the in the short term, and I don't know if the Yankees do either. It's difficult, right? Like any time, whenever Cashman trades a prospect, it means for one reason or the or the other he doesn't like that prospect anymore. <laughs> it's like I know that sounds simplistic to say, but he falls out of love with prospects seemingly, and then he's willing to trade them and will trade them almost. He, he's he's likely to trade them whenever he is no longer in love with them. So maybe Dominguez has been that. I know w when the Yankees signed him, he was he was high, highest on everyone's boards, and, and he's fallen over the last couple of years. Now he's still like only was he nineteen years old, it's like eight twenty years old. Like he's still super young. So we could have this conversation a year from now when he's back in the top ten in Major League Baseball. Yeah, but he's not that currently. Well, he's not that because he's actually facing competition now. Everything was all just uh you know w the, the fuzzy uh, Instagram videos. That, that's well, what yeah, it was. Yeah, the and 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 what scouting reports have have come up. And now he's been facing competition, and he's got to get his, you know, he's got to get his legs under him. And he's he's definitely been hitting better um, as as the season goes on. But I'm not judging him right now. You look at raw 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 tangibles. That you look at the tangibles for a guy, uh, intangibles for the guy, <laughs> tangibles intangibles for a guy. Uh, at this point, and then you look at development, and he's got it all still. He's still that guy. Hit a home run in the futures game. Like you see the you see the ability there, no doubt about it. So I, I don't but think you're he's kind of talking out of both sides of your though. mouth, though, because on the one hand, you're like trade trade pieces away to help you win now because this is the team that you have to win with, and on the other hand, you're trying to hold on to to prospects. Now maybe you don't like 
again, we're making up deals, right? It like, depends on the knows. deal. That's that's more, more my point. Like, I'm fine giving up anybody, honestly, if the, okay. if the deal is right. He's not off the table for you. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, I really – no, he's not at all. <laughs> I think it's got to be for the, the guy. It's got to be the right move. It's, it's just got to be the right move. And, and again, the And the you don't control. think someone like Luis Castillo, who has an, another year of control. He's got one slots. more year. That's the only reason. Okay. But, yeah. but he, he has one more year, and right now – he really solidifies your starting rotation behind Garrett Cole. He, he He's does. a 1A. Yeah. He, his his career has been uh you know up and down. He's gotten some up and down. He's not he's not the lock that Who that I think everybody talks about him as. Who is? No, I get that, but but he's also you know, he's one of these guys who who's run into control issues in the past and, and it's seemingly like he he's controlled it a lot better and he's he's seemingly over those control issues, but Whenever I see that, it gives me some worry in the back of my brain. Yeah, so the King thing obviously was I, – dude, I watched that video like seven times. It's just – I don't know. I was, I was kind of like a glutton for punishment just, yeah. just, just watching it. Like I felt so bad for him. Obviously, I have uh, more of a rooting interest in King than I think most people do. But, but just you know, feel really bad for him. And then my mind goes to, well, how are they going to replace what he's given them in the bullpen? And I and I don't think there's anyone on the current roster that you can replace him with. Obviously, there's guys who have had good seasons in that bullpen, but, but like Aroldis Chapman's not filling that role. Uh, Loizaga is not filling that role, and so now you've you've got to if go Loizaga acquire figures someone. out his figures out his damn mechanics, he he absolutely could be that guy. But no, he could he, be n- nothing he we've could seen. Be. Nothing we've seen so far. He needs to he needs to find the the Quan. He needs to find his he needs to find his spot. So that so that he can uh, so that he can continue to repeat it, but yeah, he's baffling to me right now. So I'm I'm hopeful that it's it's uh, you know injuries and and whatever was leading into the injury, if it was just fatigue or if it was uh, you know the, the injury climbing up to him that that made him lose his mechanics because he hasn't been like this in a long time. We we we've seen a, a much different player in the past couple of years and. If he can find that back, and I do believe it's it's 100% mechanical right now. If he can find that back, um, then then he's a, a guy certainly that could be, you know, coming in at a high level, no doubt about it. Of I have, course, the, my point is I don't have confidence he's going to right this very second. No, right, and, and Chapman, we we had Logan look up some numbers on Chapman because he had another bad outing, two wild pitches, gave up the home run. And uh, so let me just quickly run through some of this. The the fastball usage is at a career low. It's at 54%. Last year, it was at 56.6%. And it's, you know, I think it's gone down year over year, which isn't super surprising, but it's at an all-time low. His spin rates seem in line with what his, uh, his career levels are. His whiff percentage on his slider is down, down from 43% last year to 31.6% this year. He's giving up more barrels per plate appearance this year. Um, his average fastball velocity is down a hair. It's at 97 and a half miles an hour. Last year was 98.3. The year before that it was 98. Um, I, the, the one thing that jumped out to me, he's getting swings on only 20 or not only, but 23.7% of first pitches, which is down 9.1% from last year. And so I was trying to think, okay, what does that mean? And as a hitter approaching Aroldis Chapman, that to me might mean I the hitter no longer feels he needs to jump on him early and attack that first fastball in the zone. He's going to sit back and let Chapman mis- make a mistake in the middle of the plate, which he's done a lot, or be wild and walk him. And, and that's maybe why they're, you're, we're seeing hitters be a little bit more patient with Chapman. Well, both of those things that you just said are a result of not being able to command your fastball. So sure. if a batter is walking into the box and he's like, Okay, I need to um, – my game plan against Chapman is – after what I've seen this year, I'm making him come to me. I'm not going to him. So I don't need to be aggressive against him. If I'm, if I'm sitting on that first pitch, then I'm down on the count uh, if, I, if I swing and miss or if I, if I guess wrong. And then, and then now Araldis Chapman, who's had control issues all year long, is, is more in the driver's seat. I, I will let him throw the, throw the ball to me. I will take a pitch. And and absolutely, um, in for most for like most cases, work ahead. If you're working ahead with Rodriguez Chapman, you're in, you're in a much different position. Um, plus, I just don't think his fastball is playing as as well as it has in the past. Like things that we've talked about, it's just 
he's not that different anymore. He's, he's not that different. And, and y- when you can't locate, um, then it's a, it's a significant problem. So he's got to be ahead. He's got to get back. If you start to see him pepper the zone and throw that first pitch for a strike, that first pitch fastball for a strike, you will obviously see that number go up because guys are going to try to attack it. If you're down 0-1, down 0-2 in a count against Ross Chapman, totally different at bat. You get that, you get that, that 1-0 count. Now you're sitting whatever you want because you can, you can, you have the the ability His to, sliders. to not risk it. His slider is just flat out not as good as it was in previous years. His expected batting average on his slider is three twenty one. It's it's way up from previous years. No, and because part of, the of that goes issues. back to the fastball. Part of that goes it back to the fastball, does. right? Everything goes back to everything, controlling the fastball. That's where he everything that, plays his, off of the fastball. His 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 bread and butter, his entire career is working off of his fastball. He's been effectively wild for a lot of his career. Now he's ineffectively wild because he can't throw it over when he wants to. <laughs> no, he's just wild. So I. Cam may have been on the broadcast with Ruko today. We're talking about how the mental aspect and how they still think it's mental. Boone still is talking about mental, mental. We got to get Chapman mentally right. To, to me, I'm with you. It's it, Maybe it is part mental. Or not, the game is 90% mental and the other half physical to, to borrow the yogiism. But physically, Chapman on the mound is not right. Okay? So... It's not How do you just say mental. physically he's not mental he's not right. I mean mechanically is that what you mean? Mechanically like, that's what yeah. I mean. Like the like he's healthy. So would you put mechanics in the mental arena or would you put it in the physical arena? I put it in the physical arena. I, I put it in, in in a in a different place. Mechanical is okay. A lot of it could be mental because you're not you're not re- the mechanics are are meant to be repeated time and time they again. live in the middle they, yeah, live they, in the middle they do somewhere. live in the middle you you your your mind and your body have to match up to get the mechanics correct and then they have to do that over and over again to be repeatable and these guys are that's that's what makes them so so powerful that's why pitching ninja has a job because these guys repeat their mechanics so damn precisely and they throw different pitches and the ball just moves at the end of the, you know, when it goes over the plate, nothing else looks different besides the ball, either, you know, running in on someone or dropping away off the face of a the planet. These guys, it's very difficult to do that. And he's, he's got a longer delivery. So when, when he's not right, when he's not coil, it's like hitting, a lot of coil. Yeah. But when he, and, and it's a lot of move, there's just a lot of movement. So when he's not right in that, in the, um, in his mechanics, then there's not a lot of room for error with him. And that's, and that's a problem. So yeah, if he's physically not able to do that and maybe that's, maybe that's his body's not get maybe his legs aren't underneath him as, as they need to be so that he can be strong enough to repeat those mechanics over and over again, you know, uh, reps just again, just like, that's the reason spring training exists. So these guys get the reps to, to feel more comfortable and, and be able to be more uh, repeatable in their, in their motions. So I don't know, time will tell with him, but I'm not buying the fact that the seventh, eighth inning bullshit is like the reason why he can't do it. No. Cause if that's the case, then we got a bigger problem, you know, with this yeah. guy. So I, I, I'm hoping it's just like, he needs to get the reps to swing, get the swing. And he just hasn't felt it yet. And, and at some point it's just going to click. And then all of a sudden, or all Chapman's going to be back with the, you know, 99 mile an hour first pitch fastball on the black. And then that's going to be a real problem for people. But until then we're going to see this. And I guess until then we're just going to, have heart attack sixth and seventh innings. Are you having a heart because attack? You have no or choice. Or just assuming no it's choice. going to happen badly at this point. <laughs> but you have you have no choice because the 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 five games in four days out of the All Star break honestly couldn't have come at a worse time with how the, how thin this bullpen is, and and that's a reason why they had to leave Cole out there in into the seventh inning over 110 pitches on set in in the one million degree heat. Okay, it was like. The air this weekend, I, I was thick. It was, yeah. it was. You walked outside and it was like walking through like jelly. That's how. That's how thick the freaking air was. And and Cole's talking about how he couldn't get catch his breath. Okay, and you're just and, waiting for something to happen. To be honest, like when when he was out there, 112 pitches. I'm. It's not even. I'm not even looking. I'm not even like going to be a negative, uh, negative guy against Cole at that point. I was just waiting for the other shoe to drop because it looked right. like he was laboring. It, I mean, how could you not? You like could, you could visibly point, like, see that he was laboring. Right. Like at a certain point, the body can only do so much. But at the same time, he was the only choice at that point. And what frustrates me uh, is that, you know, I keep wanting him to be that guy, right? That would have been a nice, a nice moment, a nice story, is that the Yankees had no choice because of 
the bullpen was so thin. It's 100 degrees. Cole's just going out there, and he's going to nut up, and he's going to get through it. And unfortunately, that's not how it worked out. And I feel like with him, it usually doesn't work out in those kinds of situations. Why is David Robertson not on this team yet? <laughs> I think the I mean, Cubs are probably asking for they the just, Cubs are who, what, another, asking for Cashman's another, firstborn. They're asking for another low A prospect. Like, just give them what they want and get David Robertson on the team, please. Just hurry up and get this over with. It's going to happen, so just make it happen. Hurry up. Look, there's, if it's going to happen in two weeks, it's going to piss me off because you could have. Yeah. Could have been two weeks. You before need the that. bullpen help now. You <laughs> yeah. need the bullpen help now. Seriously, You're, it's it's like you, you have to. I don't know, oh, quote overpay. You've you've got to just pull the band aid right now. An overpayment for David Robertson right now is uh, I have, and I, I'm going to be very honest. I have not watched the Cubs or paid attention. I hope he's healthy, <laughs> right? In, in in what I'm talking about here, but um, I'm yes, getting the nod like, from Logan. He's healthy. Great. So, yeah, I mean. Again, like the overpayment for a David Robertson at this point, who gives a shit? It's not an overpayment that's going to matter at all, ever. Yeah, yeah it, it, but that's the thing. But you he will make it, me feel you, so much better having him here because he's still a highly effective reliever. Highly effective. I, don't, don't, let's not even talk about his age. It doesn't matter. He's a highly effective reliever right now. The, 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 the body of work is, is happening. You don't have the luxury of waiting another two weeks. Or, uh, I mean, they whatever, do. They have a 12-game lead. Okay, fine, but you don't have a twelve-game lead over the Astros. No, that's true, but I don't, I don't, I don't, don't necessarily care. think that they're playing for home field advantage or they're. You don't care. You know, no, I don't. You're About the home going, field advantage. You're, you're fine if you have to play an ALCS game seven in Houston. Yeah, I am. Really? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, why? What has made? Because I don't cool think it matters that? between those teams where they're playing. I really don't. I don't. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a significant advantage either way. I really don't. I think okay. both teams, like when they show up, it's just like it, they could be playing on the moon. It doesn't matter. It, it, you know, everything is between the lines right there. Like I understand the ballpark dimensions play into what you're doing a little bit, but um, I, I just I don't think it's that significant of a of a of a of a piece when you talk about those two teams. I mean, there's there's such high intensity at those, and I. You know, I think these guys at that point are just like they're they're so in their own heads in in between the lines that they're not really affected by much uh, of the of the atmosphere. To be honest, they played just, two th close games. Obviously, the Yankees came back in the first one and then couldn't hang on. King, they walked off on King, and then in the second one they almost came back. They got the Judge the, the home run over the train tracks, and then t Carpenter's up hits into the double play to to end the game. So yeah, those games were close. Maybe one extra hit and it's and it's a different story but i don't feel good about playing the astros no matter where i'm just saying Mo like Mo Mo yankee stadium up. houston uh minute made or or the moon i don't feel good about playing the astros because for whatever right. reason it's just like well that's a different story a, that, that's a different story <laughs> that but the like the the location to me I, I understand we want that game at yankee stadium don't get me wrong like of course i want that game at yankee stadium but they're, they're not certainly not making much I don't think they're looking at that right now in July, and and I would be very surprised at the end, even in September, they're they're making like significant runs just to that. They haven't done it before. This has been a situation in the past where they're either playing for health, playing to get just to to be in the playoffs, playing for home. It doesn't matter. They don't do it. They just they let the cards fall where they may, and then and then they go in. So, um, you know that's that's to me the. The bigger thing, I, I really don't think that's going to come down to uh, a make or break. Let me ask you a question: If you, if we get down to like the last day, game or you know towards the end of the season where it's mattering, and uh, you know there's a decision that has to be made of pitching somebody to uh, to to win that home field or we're saving them for the playoff game, what are they going to do? Are they going to line it up the, for the playoff the tough, game? Well, here's the tough thing, though, because it's not you're not playing a playoff game. You, If you're not the number one seed, you're going to be the number two seed. So no matter what, you've got time. So why not play for the home field? Because you've got you've got the luxury of having a first-round bye as a top two seed. So, so why not try and get the first seed? It's not like, oh, if we pitch this guy today, he can't pitch in two days in our playoff game. Okay, but that's, that's going to happen in the last two weeks of the season. That's not going to happen right now. It's, I don't think it's anywhere. Well, any, the last week mind. of the Yankee season is going to be super weird because they've got that awful doubleheader. On I think it's the second to last day of the season in in Texas it, at, at the Rangers because of the lockout reschedule. It's just a clusterfuck. 
I yeah, they play, about a, that. There, they play a double, double header, header. The second game of the, the. I believe it's the second. Logan, can you quickly check? It's like what the final weekend is or something like that. What are like they that. doing? Yeah, so the the normal, like, last weekend would have been at, Balti- uh, at home against Baltimore, and then they go on the road. Uh, it was a four game series at Texas. So Monday, 7 o'clock, Tuesday, double header, Wednesday, 4 <laughs> 05. Sucks. That sucks. That just sucks if you're playing for anything that sucks. <laughs> need those 40 man rosters hopefully but they're gone so they're all gonna have to play too that's an awful way to end the season yeah i mean the season the se- the uh schedule making person needs to needs to uh go away so Probably. i want to play i want to play the quote from boone after they got swept in the double header logan if you could tee that up given the history that, that you have against the Astros. Mm-hmm. You know, they've won five of seven. Yeah. The two wins you had are walk-off wins. They, they've been in control of most of these games. How do you get past that part and, and you know, change the narrative here? Look, it's not, the narrative's not going to change, Dan, until you beat them in the playoffs if, if that day comes. I mean, we beat them four out of six last year, and they didn't hold leads. Where'd that get us? It, I understand it's a big story. I understand the season we're in. <laughs> it, it, it's not going to matter unless October. So we're going to, if we if we happen to come back here in October, we're going to show up. We're going to expect to win. We think we're really good. They're really good. Don't overstate this. By golly, he finally fucking gets it. He finally gets it. Because any other version of Aaron Boone up until this point sits there and spews some horse crap and tries to sugarcoat it and tries to tell you why it doesn't matter in some other way. No, he finally understands it and he finally says it. None of this freaking matters against the Astros unless we play them and beat them in October. Otherwise, who cares? Thank you. Finally, I've been hoping and praying you would say that for three goddamn years. He finally gets it. There's nothing wrong in anything he said. It's all accurate. It's all absolutely 100% accurate. They have to beat them in the playoffs. Yes, you want, but it kind of it kind of goes against what we've been just talking about a little bit. They're, they're not setting themselves up again. Even the one-on-one matchups, like again, doesn't really matter as much, whether it's in Houston, whether it's in the Bronx. Obviously, both fan bases want those games, the home field advantage in their own place. No doubt about it. You give me an option, of course, of that's what I want. But I just don't think it matters that much to the players. And when you get down to the to the the nitty gritty, and you talk, you talk about the the tension, which you could cut with a freaking, um, it's thick. <laughs> you need a knife thick to cut it. Air in Baltimore. You need a knife to cut it, and it doesn't matter where it is. This these teams don't like each other. The Astros believe that they own the Yankees. They truly believe that. They believe that they do. And you know what? They probably have every right to think that right now. And not to mention the whole the whole scandal thing. They they feel I I guarantee you Alex Bregman in his own mind thinks that that he's rent free in in uh, in New York. You know he's he's got the if anybody's if anybody's got cheap rent in New York City it's Alex Bregman and that's what do people you know, think that's what they think. Do you know what I wish? And I that's all up. they need to hold on. That's all they need to do. They just need to think it. They just need to think it because then they use it. We talked about manufacturing what did we just say? things. Yeah, yeah, from the Jeter episode. Yeah, yeah. you man, just, you manufacture. If you hatred, think it, and that's what the Astros a, have done. It's a fact. So I, I wish I brought this up with Bleacher Blums, uh, Jeff and, and David. Uh, if you guys haven't listened to that episode, you know we said we were going to preview that doubleheader. We barely touched on it. It was a lot of other stuff that we talked about. So I definitely recommend you go listen to it. It, it was out last week. Even we realized I, that that didn't matter. <laughs> so we didn't what? talk about the yeah, actual yeah, yeah. matchup. We just talked about the. the I wish the error. But, what was in the air so you brought up the fact that they are arrogant and and don't you know basically smug was the like, word i used yeah they were smug and i think part of that stems from they think everyone else was doing something as well and they've con- convinced themselves that the yankees and the red Sox and the dodgers every other team that they played and beat in that run was doing something maybe not exactly the same but equally as bad and i think that is part of the reason why they can act so smug and that's the manufactured hate that they have 
And it's like, why is everyone hating on us when they were doing the same thing sort of thing? I wish I had brought that up because I do feel like that is, that is, uh, plays a role in all of this. It's not so much like, uh, I think it's, it's more of, of everybody. Okay. You know what? You hate us. Go ahead. We're, we're the ones that got caught. We're the ones that everybody looks at, but everybody was doing it. And you know what? We're just going to beat everybody's ass now because we when we, when we know, when everybody knows that, um, you know, it's, it's kosher at this point. So it doesn't matter. So that's their, I think their motivation right now is to do everything beyond that. So that, that gets dumbed down that, that to me would be the biggest motive. If I'm Alex Bregman, anybody on that 17 team, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying my, I mean, absolute that, that my, I'm trying to win the, the next one is the most important one because if you can win one in the net in the, in five years after it, six years after it, whatever, then you look back and be like, see, didn't matter. Right. Yeah, they've got there. They haven't won it, obviously. So but that's what they're going for. You know damn well. Sure. Because if they get that, then then they can actually say that, or they and that that could be a narrative. Justifies. And they it. will, they will, yeah. Oh, they will spew it. They will point backwards and say, "See, it didn't matter." The uh, the 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 Yankees were have been dominated by the Astros this season. There was not a single pitch thrown in the seven games where the Yankees had the lead. Obviously, they won two of the games, but they were all, they were both on walk-offs. So there were no pitches thrown in the game where the Yankees had the lead. It was either tied or they were playing from behind. The Astros absolutely dominated them. And then in that quote, you just heard Boone said, well, we dominated them last year. And where did that get us? Nowhere. So this isn't going to get the Astros anywhere unless they, you know, take it and, and, and beat the Yankees in the playoffs. Just like the Yankees are going to try and beat the Astros in the playoffs. However, back to your point about, Oh, I don't care where this game is played. You know, we're not going to be playing for home field advantage because I'll play them on the moon. I'll play them at Minute Maid Park. I think the Astros own the Yankees. And you need absolutely every advantage you can possibly get if you are going to play them in the playoffs. And I think you are going to play them in the playoffs because you and them are clearly the two best teams in the American League. I just don't think it's an advantage. That's my point. I think that they walk into that building too and they're like, they, they love the hate. Like they love the hate. There are there are athletes that would rather play in enemy territory because it fuels them and gets them and keeps them sharp. Uh, that those people absolutely exist. And and when you have that adversity, it almost gives you that fu that chip on the shoulder, like in the moment. And I think those guys, they don't care. I just don't think it matters. I mean, you look what happens in you know DJ LeMay, he was hitting hitting home runs late in the game. The Yankees should have taken care of business, except. It didn't happen because someone else did. But I'm saying it didn't matter. The pressure wasn't there. The park didn't affect anything. It still happened, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I feel like looking back at like, especially 17, if you remember in the playoffs, the Astros had no chance at Yankee Stadium, right? Like they just, they were completely overmatched. I mean, I know 19 was a little bit different and they still, the Yankees stole a game in Houston, but even if you take out, not even take out that series, but if you just look at all the games that they've played even in the regular season, they the Astros are not as good when at, when they're in Yankee Stadium. I mean, I couldn't think of, you know, I mean, in 2018, I think the Yankees took two out of three. I know la- last year they took two out of three, and but then again, they almost swept them in Houston last year. So I guess it doesn't really matter. I just... I don't know. I think that they, I do think, I don't think they care about it. And I don't think they would gun for it. But also I think that the Yankees love, especially in the playoffs to play in their own building. And they absolutely, you know. my, I think the, my point is that they don't care enough to do something about it. If it, if it's a, if it's a decision one way or the other, they're going to let, they're going to let the play on the field dictate what happens, but they're you're not going right. to go. Out I know you're way. right. I know yeah. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not arguing with what I'm not arguing with you about if you're right or wrong. I'm just saying if maybe they should care more that, that that's really my point is maybe they should care more. And, and maybe if you, like we've said, play with urgency through the season, then that'll just carry through into the, to October. And I mean, and, we, we need to, we need to also just make sure we're taking a step back here and not overreacting to certain things. They have been playing with urgency this whole year. They've done. They've made a point to talk about that. The fact that I mean, there's been a mentality You're inside right. that clubhouse. We're playing with urgency. Every game, it matters. I mean, you look at, you look at the reaction of that double play that Cole. What was that? The seventh inning um, when they when it turned. I mean, it was a fantastic. It was an uh, unbelievable. Uh, it wasn't a double play. I'm sorry. It was the IKF play where Lemay who picked it. It was two two plays in the one play when IKF uh, went over and or I'm sorry Donaldson. 
I'm totally wrecking my brain. But I, uh, LeMahieu picked the ball at first base for the third out, and Cole yes. went nuts. And you could see the yes. emotion on his face that that mattered a, a lot. And they're playing Baltimore in July. So, I, I mean, I don't <laughs> think that the sense of banana. urgency. <laughs> huh? And he housed another banana. Did you see that clip? He was just, he was just inhaling a banana to get some potassium in him. It was, it was actually pretty freaking hilarious. Every time I think <laughs> of a, a pitcher eating a banana, I think of Andy Pettit. Yeah, yeah, but he took like he ate a banana like one and a half bites. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how many it takes. You just take it in. It's just fuel. You just need it so that you don't cramp. <laughs> it's like let me eat this fast enough so no one sees me eating it. <laughs> so, I don't want to be caught on camera eating the. Banana. I don't want to be caught on camera <laughs> eating eating a phallic fruit. <laughs> Too late, Garrett. Too late. So Judge came, has come out of the out of the gates hot in the second half. Um, I was I, I noticed his batting average was was up up in the the two nineties again. Uh, it had been dipping a little bit. He had a little bit of a slump in the beginning of July, um, but he he has just been on fire. Hot is an understatement. And hot is an not understatement. only not only been hot, but like the sheer distance on the home runs. It's just like when every home run is four hundred and forty feet plus. It's like, all right, all right. I see you, Aaron. I see you, dude. The, uh, he, you. I, I, I said this. I've said this probably three times this year in different at different times. You just cannot make a mistake to him. If you make a mistake to Aaron Judge at any point in the at bat, it's a home run. Yeah, he's just he's not missing. He doesn't miss right now. And when when that guy is locked in, you know, I've talked about the way his stroke is right now. The way that it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And. He's not just hitting those balls to to, to right field. Like the, he's in the, his his bat is in the zone for for an extremely long time. But guess what? He's timing these pitches beautifully well too, and he's making a concerted effort to pull the ball too. And he's smoking the ball. I mean, these are barrels that that I don't even know. I, I was listening to Chirinos talk after the game today, and the home run that they uh, that he gave up. I mean, it was it was uh, uh, they hung the shit out of it, and it was supposed to be in the dirt. Chirinos is like, yeah, that was supposed to be in the dirt. Was not in the dirt. You make any mistake to Aaron Judge anywhere around the plate, and you're in trouble. It's like Garrett. Like, hey, I tried to throw a, a bad changeup. To I to, to tried to throw a changeup out of the zone to Devers, and no, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. I don't know that I've ever seen a home run go over those bullpens at Camden Yards like Judge hit. I I'm not sure. I don't remember if they have or not. Yeah, I, yeah. I it's just it. like that. That that was it's a huge home run. Yeah, that was like the first time I'd ever seen it just clear the bullpens entirely. So obviously. I feel like someone to be unnamed has done that before. Oh, <laughs> GS. What? <laughs> this, this is, are his initials <laughs> GS? <laughs> huh? Yeah, okay, I hear you. J? Why All is right. there? A, why is? Why do you have a soft? Keep going. You're very confusing <laughs> right now. Um, who are you talking about? Gary Sanchez. Yeah, G S. Just Gus. Why are you saying J? Like his name is, like his name is Jerry. I feel like you're doing a bit you, right now, but you, I, I, you, I, I'm quite, I'm not quite picking up on the bit. Anyway. I just don't quite understand the. Look, I'm teaching a kid how to read who's five years old right now. I understand how to pronounce letters, and J is not uh, G. Well, why are why are you teaching him how to read? Bevin's well, I'm not. The, when I say educator. me, it's it's my wife. <laughs> but I'm listening to it. Okay. So I'm learning again too. And what so, you just did was incorrect. We have not recorded since the All Star game in the home run derby. Well, we've recorded, but we haven't talked about it. Anything you want to talk about from from that? I actually thought the 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 broadcast of the. So I was worried, right? Like when. When they had um, Manoa mic'd up and he was pitching, and I was like, he was just huffing and puffing because he's a big fatso. I was like, oh boy, here we go. Just like you're micing these pitchers up now. Like this is this is gonna be ugly. But it's actually pretty entertaining listening to them. It's always entertaining when they have mics on anybody. It's so much better. I wish they did this. You want to make a real change? Do that. Make put the mics. I'm on never these guys. gonna do that in real games. Every though. game, give it to me. Give it to me. Make the make the regular season. With nine, you know, there's 25 uh, playoff spots. Just mic them up. That'll that'll add some context to what we're doing here. It's really entertaining. So yeah, and they don't want. They're like, I love I love when they're like, here we go, here we go. Uh, Nestor was doing it, uh, and Manoa was doing it too. He's like, here we go. Basically, like, 
Smoltz, shut the f up in my head. I'm about to pitch. Stop talking. Here we go. And then, he's, and then he and then he goes out and then throws. I, I think it's really entertaining because they're having fun with it, and it's like uh, it's like these guys are out there, you know, just just playing rec ball. It's fun. I loved the Nestor and Trevino mic up. Like that was that was highly entertaining. Obviously, because yeah. we're Yankees fans, but like that that was just fun. That was just fun to listen to those guys. It was a lot of fun. Trevino is a character. He's a, he's definitely one of those guys who'll just talk your ear off for a long yeah. time. So, um, no, I I thought it was awesome. I think I think Jose Trevino had a nice little coming out party for himself uh, with a national audience because he he was his his personality was on full display. Yeah, and obviously Stanton wins wins the MVP. He was mic'd up. Judge's mic didn't work. Um, I don't know if if Judge Dis- was going to be disrespectful. All, the, all that interesting, disrespectful but, disrespectful yeah. equipment setup right there. Some, there was there was someone did that. It was a, a Shohei Atani fan. Somebody did that. So there was also a question. It. So Marley Rivera did an interview with Judge, and she relayed a fan Jacobs question. It said, "Are you telling me that Aaron Judge may not be a Yankee after this year?" And Judge's response was, "Jacob, buddy, we've got a lot of great Yankees on this team. There's a lot of great Yankees that will be here for a long time." Don't be upset. Hopefully, you'll be a you'll be a Judge fan for life. What are your thoughts on the on the response from Judge? Terribly loaded question. First of all, let's bring some children from, into this. Well, Marley, Jacob in air quotes. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's that's a, that's how Marley Rivera is going to stand there and ask Aaron Judge the question about his contract without Judge just looking staring daggers through her because she's hiding behind some fictitious jacob um no you know he's 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 answered it pretty pretty closely each time i think it's he's been hinting to the fact that that he wants to be here and hopes to be a yankee for a very long time that's that's kind of been the the common thread of all of the 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 words that have come out of his mouth about this so you know it's uh Look, I, I I do believe that he does want to be here. I think that he just wants also the Yankees to pay him to do that. He wants he wants the money. Of course, okay. He does. Like and and of he should he, does. he should want the money. Yes, he should. So when we did, and they the, have the absolute ability to pay him more than anybody else could if they wanted to. I remember when on opening day when that whole debacle happened, and then you and I talked about how oh we don't want this to be a distraction right like we want this contract to get done so there's not a bunch of questions asked to judge about his contract would you say uh, you know a little bit more than halfway through the season there has been more or less of that talk than you expect expected i mean much much i I'm probably about the same i didn't really think there was going to be i don't i didn't think the the new york media would look the new york media has got to talk to him on a daily you know these guys on a daily basis they're not gonna they're not gonna just you know, beat a dead horse. They understand what the deal is too. They have to build relationships and keep relationships in the clubhouse. It's it's more when he's on the road, and that, I just don't think it matters that much. And we probably don't even hear those as as um, as often as you they get are it at the All Star Game because that's the national spotlight, yeah, right? Like right, you have exactly. to get it at the All Star. It's a it's a it's a national story because they're talking about it. Whenever anybody's talking about Aaron Judge for uh, around the All Star Game because it's a national audience, they're going to bring up the contract, especially with well, the anytime- whole Soto with the whole Soto news too. Anytime you get a national media talking about Judge, the contract is the story. It's not what he did against Baltimore, or it's not what the Yankees are doing. It's, it's, it's in it's, tandem. It's it's the whole you bet on yourself piece. That's what the story is. He's like it's the it's the contract, but they always bring up the so you bet on yourself. Looks like it's working out. So they're 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 layering it. They're adding in the the season. So you know giving giving him his due for what he's doing on the field, and then mentioning the contract pretty much in the same breath. Do you think if the team wasn't having such a great year that maybe this would be a little bit more of a conversation? Yeah. Especially, especially if judge wasn't having a good year. I think if judge wasn't, I think that's the biggest trigger for him. If judge was not having the year he's having, if he was having a, let's say he, I'm not going to say anything bad. Actually, if he wasn't having the same year, then, then, then it would be different. It would absolutely be different. But that's the point. Like he's not. <laughs> so so it's nobody's okay. What are you gonna say? I did the right thing. Clearly, obviously, right now it's like there's nothing <laughs> to, say. to say. That nobody can. To say. He's gonna wait till after the season, though, right? Like, yeah. It's like, like have you been you watching me play baseball? Have you been watching me play baseball? I'm pretty good, actually. What best player on the planet? So that's true. You know, there's nothing to yeah. say to him at this point. Nobody can say shit. 
I would say there's actually been less questions, fewer questions about the contract than I anticipated. And maybe they'll pick up towards the end of the season. Uh, certainly in, whenever they get bounced in the playoffs or if they win, like as soon as the season is over, right? Like that's the question you asked to well, judge. As soon as the season's over, but everybody knows what the answer is going to be already. So why, why are you going to make that one of your questions? You're just going to, you're just going to not get the same respect you got that during that time. If, if you ask that, you, you know, the answer, don't ask the question. And, and I think that's what a lot of them are doing. They, they care I about think, their jobs and they're being professional because it's, it's not, it's not a storyline right now. It's just not. I think what's rubbing some Yankees fans the wrong way with judges answers is he keeps alluding to free agency as if he wants to get to free agency. He does want to get a free agency. That's why he said no to the contract. I know, but I think that's what's rubbing. No, I know that, but I think that's what's rubbing Yankees fans the wrong way because Yankees fans want you to just, Oh, I'm not even thinking about free. I, I just want the Yankees to offer me a con. I just want to get my contract. I mean, I get it, but I, but I also, it. I don't see, I don't really see the uproar. Uh, I think a lot of people understand most people that I've seen I, the, the by far side. the biggest take is the, uh, is that, is that he, now that you see what he's doing, he clearly did the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And especially obviously. when you see what Soto turned down, like, of course you, you go to, and you see what, what's you up. This. It's a business, man. If, if uh Cashman could have a do over, would he go back and offer a different contract? No. Yeah. I think now? he would. I think he would. I think if they how had much, a do-over, how much bigger? I think that they would go to the ten years that, that I think he 10. wants. I think I think he wants ten. Uh, whether he's going to get ten or not, they could probably get it done with a, a higher AAV. But they just need to give him what he wants. He clearly asked for something. They should have just given him what he wants. Yeah. So if Cashman could do it all over again, and they went back, and pers- first of all, it's not totally Cashman's call on this one, right? Like this is an ownership call on, on the amount of money that's coming out. So yeah, I think that they would be stupid to say that they wouldn't want to do it over again and just like go the distance with, uh, with whatever it was because they're going to have to do it anyway. Field of dreams reference right there. Yeah, Maybe, you know, <laughs> it is a baseball podcast after all. All right, let's preview the Yankees Mets series and we're going to do it using WinBet, which is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. They bring the excitement of the win Las Vegas to online sports betting and casino play. From boosted same-game parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today and receive a special offer. Bet $50 and win $200 using code XBLUEWIRE. Yankees Mets, baby. I don't know the last time the two teams that were this good playing this late in the season. Yeah, no, this is going to be fun. It's going to be, it's going to be, I mean, that place is going to be rocking. There's no doubt they're, they're going to the Yankee. I mean, Mets fans loathe the Yankees. <laughs> they, 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 they absolutely loathe them, especially when they're good because they, they hate being the second fiddle when they are a very good team themselves. So um, there's a lot of hatred there uh, in the fan base, I think. And, really from one side, to be honest. I don't think it's actually the other way. I don't think very many Yankees fans hate Mets fans as much as the other way around. Um, but that's what happens. No, you definitely know, not. When there's, when <laughs> definitely there's, not. Yeah, it's like non-threatening. It, it, it's similar. It's it's similar to – it's not similar. Never mind. I was going to say that it's similar to the when Yankees and the Red Sox went before the Red Sox won. No, but I not, hated – Not I in famous. I hated Sox. them every yeah. every second of them, yeah. And yeah. they hated us. Yeah. And they so loathed I, us. I'm going to the Tuesday game. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's at City Field. I'm really pumped, actually, to be the fact that it's at City Field. Like, obviously, I love to go to the one at Yankee Stadium, but the fact that it's on the road for the Yankees, I'm actually kind of have a little bit extra juice for it. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be a fun game. Um, have uh, you been to City Field? I have. Not recently, but I don't know. A couple years after it opened, I think. How long's it? How long's the City Field been open now? Same amount of time as Yankee Stadium. They oh, really? both opened in two thousand nine. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I went um, to. I think I Yankees... went in like two thousand fifteen, probably. Yeah, I think I went in two thousand fourteen or I want to say fourteen or fifteen. I went to a Yankees Mets game at uh, at City Field in. Yeah, it must have been two thousand fifteen, um, and I liked it. Obviously, it was. It was it's a beautiful stadium. Um, so I'm super excited. And the pitching matchups are Jordan Montgomery versus Taiwan Walker. And then Wednesday, 
slotted to be Domingo Herman. We'll see what happens there. We should probably touch on Herman against Max Scherzer. And Scherzer, since returning from injury, has been his usual freaking dominant self. Um, so I don't know if we're going to be betting on, on the Wednesday matchup. I guess you'd go with Monty versus Taiwan Walker if you're gonna if you're gonna be making some bets. But what did you think of Herman uh, quickly on that Houston start first first start of the season? Well, hold on. Let's talk about it real quick. Monty's the one that's to me, uh, you know, the guy that's that has the ability to take another leap into, um, you know, being a very trusted guy. He's been very good. So I expect that game. Uh, if I'm betting on those games, certainly betting on Monty against Taiwan yeah. freaking Walker. But, um, but yeah, uh, Herman. Look, I think her. I'm certainly reserving judgment until I see Herman a couple times because I think that they're going to need him in the uh, I, you know depending on how Severino is is uh, eventually come along uh, Logan put in the notes that he hasn't he hasn't thrown yet so you know it's going to be a minute it's going to be you know we're looking at probably September before we see him right at this point we're, we're approaching the end of uh, it, it depends when he starts throwing because you need a couple of rehab assignments and then and then uh, you know they you know they're going to go slow with him um uh, at this point, so I, I have a feeling September is the guy's the the time frame. So Herman's gonna be gonna be needed, but I'm reserving judgment. I'm not gonna base it off of one, you know, weird doubleheader in Houston right after the All Star game. Why not give Clark Schmidt the the chance? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not I'm not even necessarily saying. I think eventually he's going to. To I be know. honest, I think he's got to be stretched out a little bit more. He's not fully stretched no, out. He's I been, mean, he's getting stretched out in in. He's been he he's just been threw stretched three out. innings today. Was it three, three innings? innings? I know. So like the the pitching does not line up, right? Like so he just pitched today. Obviously he can't pitch against the Mets. It's Domingo Herman's turn to pitch. But I would I I know what Domingo Herman is probably going to be. I would like at this point to give the ch- that ch- opportunity to be a starter in this rotation to Clark Schmidt. I think that, yeah, depending on what's going to happen here at the deadline, that, that, that you're going to see that. I do. I think you're going to see that. I, you know, there, it could be something about him managing his innings too. And then they're, you know, they'll, they'll fully stretch him out a little bit later and, and see what they got, but they do have to time that. I think relatively well to, to get him, you know, to be a, a contributor down the stretch because they're, they're not going to allow him just to go not Clark Schmidt. I think that they have, they see him in, in the future rotation. So they're, they're going to make sure they're careful with him. And Did when I say agree? careful, I mean, they're, they're looking at his pitches, the amount of, the amount of pitch or amount of innings that he's throwing this year. I know we're kind of jumping all over the place, but did you agree? I meant to ask you this. Did you agree with the quick hook on Tyone? Yeah, he didn't have it, man. Yeah. I was fine with that. Yeah. I really, he, he did not, he did not look good. He did not look, uh, he, he again location is a problem for him i know he pitched well the timeout before the all-star break but he, he has not earned the right to battle through that start right now no i agree i think I they're think you're hard. right that, and that's a that that's something that that definitely needs to be um id'd because the uh when in june may june when these guys were were going deeper we had talked about hey they're actually letting them go cuz they they did earn it oh, yeah. i mean and in years past they had earned I, they didn't even get the opportunity to earn it, and that was what was frustrating. This year, they did. They got the opportunity. But yes, when when you have a when you're giving up home runs like uh, Jameson Tyone does as well, and and, and he doesn't have uh, the command on a, on a given day, you you could easily get yourself in a, in a much bigger hole uh, by not pulling him. Uh, you know when the bats are, are, are attacking him as they were. So I, I have no but, problem with that with the hook that. They... But to be pulled the day after you just played a doubleheader really shows that your manager thinks you have not earned that to, to battle through that start because yeah. usually managers will be a little bit more tolerant on that because you just have to be right. Like you need length out of your starting pitching because you just played a double header, but Boone came out of there real quick. He's like, I'm not dealing with this shit. Yeah. And, and that's fine. It was the right call. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. Well, it's going to be a fun, fun uh, couple games. I wish it was more than a two-game series against the Mets. I know they're doing that that home and home sort of split up thing. Um, again, scheduling. I feel like I feel like we've just been complaining about the schedule. Any, anything else you want to touch on, Scott? Yeah, Logan uh, just put something in the notes to touch on some of these uh, free agent guys. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of reports, not just from John Heyman, but from from other people uh, about Benintendi and and that the Yankees are are definitely um, in talks and and 
and seemingly aggressive. We're going to be aggressive to go after him. So I do love that. I dude, I, I don't know how much longer I can see Joey Gallo on. on oh, my even television. though he had that big home run, <laughs> he yeah. had a big home run this weekend. You know what sucks too is that like the the ball that he hit to the fence today. I mean that was that was it. It had to go out. You know. <laughs> now we're going to go another three weeks until he hits a ball that far. Also, I wanted to mention this about Joey Gallo. So the play today when Glaber shifted into the outfield. Yes. And and he goes back to the warning track and can't make sort of the running over the shoulder catch. And Gallo is kind of like playing tentatively out there. I understand to a degree. It's like, oh, this is a, this is a second baseman out here in left center field. Such a weird dude, defensive alignment anyway. S- scream long in advance. I'm taking this ball. I'm ta- like, like, don't even let. Glaber track that down Gallo sprint over there and catch the freaking ball you're the supposedly gold glove outfielder yes for sure but I also I'm gonna I'm not gonna kill him on it because Glaber is so out of position that you don't know what was you know he, he he's he's going instinctually and he's back there and he's just they're all the wrong instincts I just I, I hate putting a guy like that in a position uh that that he has to go they did back it again later in the awkward, game they it's did just it again so, it's very, yeah. I don't, I don't like it. You know, maybe this is it because next year when they, when they, uh, when they ban the shift, if they end up doing it, we won't see that nonsense. And that's ban the I'm shift, fine. and Joey Gallo totally is going to win a batting that. title. Not on this team. Not on this team. <laughs> Not on this. <laughs> team. No, I don't even want him the opportunity. No, if if, I, if you could tell me, no, I, I just don't want to see it. I just, I don't want to see it. I don't. <laughs> you want you want MLB to ban the shift. Except when Joey Gallo is batting, he you can still shift against only Joey Gallo. That's, that's there's just little... certain people that I'm over and I'm done like wearing wearing the Yankee uniform, and he's definitely one of them. I, I'm I'm over it. it yeah. This was cool. It Join wasn't. It wasn't cool. Get him off the team, please. Give me Andrew. Give me. <laughs> I, I really could care less. Give me Miguel Andujar every single day. Every single day, and I, it's it's flat out disrespectful to him right now that he is not playing in place of Joey Gallo. Honestly, it's disrespectful. He's not he's not even a bad outfielder. I mean, yes, Carpenter should be playing there every day too, or damn close to it, because he actually played pretty decent in the outfield as well. But um, no, if Stanton's getting the day, like, yeah, for, he's exhausted. That was the report on on Stanton, just exhausted. Okay, well. That's fine. Keep, like, I guess, he, he, I guess he, you know why he didn't have a pod to fly out to Los Angeles for the All Star game. Well, at least they got him a, a a charter, you know, with the whole Soto thing. I mean that that is a crazy story. Hearing that about Soto not getting the um, the Nationals not chartering him a plane to go out to the All Star game, he had to fly commercial to get there at one thirty. I mean, it sounds like such for such a such a uh, first world problem right there, like well beyond that rich guy problem. But it's it's so petty. Also, it's very petty. I mean, you turn down a half a billion dollars, you could go get on a Delta flight. Get your own buddy. damn. Get your own damn flight. <laughs> you uh, st- you got to go through TSA just like everybody else. You know, uh, someone did get inducted into the Hall of Fame today. Yeah, I tried to ignore it. <laughs> I didn't like. There was a bunch of video clips going. Around I haven't Twitter. seen anything I, I did, about I did it. I've not watched clearly... one second. I don't. I've either blocked or don't follow any of that. Anything remotely talking about the Boston Red Sox on. Um, on Twitter, so I don't see any of that, and then just I haven't really seen many people talk about it. So that it happened, right? Mm-hmm. He's there now. Mm-hmm. The the lake looked beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful right. lake. It looks like a Caribbean blue, uh, blue water. It's it's a it's a it's a beautiful setting. We're on to lake talk. I think that's cue to wrap this thing up. Again, we did four episodes last week. All-Star break was not an all-star break for us. So go back and listen to those episodes if you have not already done so. We recapped the Jeter documentary, those first two episodes on Friday. And we're going to be doing that every Friday-ish going forward for the rest of the documentary. I'm actually really looking forward to the next episode. I'm, I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, oh, damn, I could, I could go for, for another episode right about that. Yeah, they're good. They're inspirational. I'm getting, I'm getting parental lessons from, uh, from, from the Jeter family. I love it. He's being a militaristic father. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually, I also was thinking about the Tiger Woods dad thing. I, that's why I made Kemp go back outside, take 15 more swings. I didn't like the way that those looked. Get back out there. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back at you in a couple of days.